So hello again, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to do Sonal statistics using Google Earth Engine. And in this video, I'm going to show very basic Sonal statistic analysis. And when we do Sonal statistics, what we're trying to do is make some descriptive statistic measurements within a region of a raster data set. And since we're doing some mathematical analysis, we need to consider the data that we have in that raster. So I'm going to give you an example of doing um, statistical analysis um, with categorical data sets and with a continuous data set. And for the categorical data set, we're just going to apply the frequency histogram, of the EE reducer, which is one of those things that you need to use for doing some statistics. And for the continuous data set, I'll use a Landsat. Um, for showing how to do a EE reducer mean. Um, for the categorical data set, let's go to Google Earth Engine and let's go to the data sets and let's go to use the crop data set again. Um, so exploring land cover, sorry, land cover, no. Um, I think we even have crop data set here. Yeah, explore crop data set and we have crop data set. We can go all the way here to the code. And while it's, it's opening the code, um, I want to show you very quickly something. So the band of cropland, which is the one that we're going to use, has multiple values on the pixels. And those values, even though they're numerical, what they mean are categories of crop. So value one, it's corn. Value two, it's cotton. Value three is rice. So if I added one plus two would be equal to three, right? But that would make no sense because that would be like saying corn plus cotton equals rice. So when we have categorical data sets, we do not do this kind of math. So for instance, when we're going to do some type of sonal statistics on a categorical data set, what we want to do is count the pixels. Um, so let me go here to the code that I opened. And let's go to Asheville again. And the reason why I'm going to go to Asheville is that later on, I'm, what I'm going to do is, is take um, the example that I did before for Boncom. Um, let me go and see where is Asheville over here. OK, and let's go ahead and I'm just going to put a, I mean, use the inspector to determine the, the latitude and the longitude. Or I should say the longitude and the latitude and put it here. Okay, so now we're in the area of, of Asheville, but I should change the zoom, definitely. So let me put it 14 in zoom, and now we're very close. Okay, so we have different categories of crop. Let me just inspect, for instance, this one, this yellow one. It has the crop land cover and um, Crop land one, okay. So, and where's the value? Um, that I don't see it now. Ah, crop land one, yeah, yeah, okay, that's good. I and let's see what is this one 141, and this one that looks like water is 111. So, let's go back and see. So, one was corn, okay, good. Yellow, they, they put yellow for corn. Um, 141 is deciduous forest and uh, what was water? Now I forgot. I can't believe my memory is not so good anymore. 111. So 111 open water. Okay, so you can see that each of those numbers me, uh, represent a category. Um, so now what? What are we going to do? So we're going to do some small statistics and we're doing it on a categorical data set. And what we need to do um, is create a region. And I'm going to go ahead and, and look for a region that seems pretty simple, like this area, where we only see um, these classes, and this one and that one. Let me see again, what is this? This is 37, class 37. And what is outside? 121. OK, looks good. OK, so let me create a, a geometry covering this area. OK, and um, let's go 
called Geometry 1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a sum statistic only for that area where I'm asking the Google Earth engine to count the number of pixels. So they say right now this geometry, it's representing um, your county and you want to count how many different pixels you have within your county of the different uh, agricultural activities or land uses. Um, so I need to do that and, um, and to do that we need to use the methods um, created by uh, Google Earth Engine which is using the reduced region so I'm just gonna go ahead and, and write a variable and I'm gonna call it the count and I'm gonna say that this is equal to crop land cover and crop land cover again the crop land cover is this one right the the data set of only the band cropland that's coming from this image collection. So I'm saying cropland cover. Um, now I'm going to apply the method that is one of these methods that is important for for getting the information into a, a compressed format. Let's call it. So I'm going to call it reduce. I mean, I'm not calling it. That's the way. Google Earth Engine called it. Reduce region, um, open parentheses, and then open curly brackets. And now we're gonna give it uh, some information, which one of the most important one is that we have to give it a reducer. And since we're working with um, categorical data, we're going to apply, we can look at the reducers here actually. Let's, let's look at the possible reducers. So with the EE reducers, um, we have multiple ones here. The one that I'm going to use is, is count. Okay, so um, again, because we have categorical data, and what I want to do is uh, count. Actually, no, the mean do uh, not count because count would be to only count the number of pixels. What I want to use is the frequency histogram. So this one. Okay, so this is the one that will um, uh, give us a frequency for the area that we're looking at. So I'm gonna use that. Didn't, yeah, I copy pasted. So now let me give it other attributes, like um, what is the geometry? Geometry mean where, where, sorry, semicolon, where is it going to be uh, analyzed? So I already created a geometry that is called geometry which is this little square here I'm gonna give it another attribute now so I put a comma and I need to give it that scale um, and the scale you need you should get it from this information right so if we wanted a uh, count where it's each pixel it's count one right so let's give it a 30 meter value because that's the scale of the of the pixel so I'm gonna give it a 30 um, and we can put other other um, attributes but I'm just gonna leave it there for the moment for the sake of the of this short video and um, if I want to see the results of this analysis I have to go do a print and I'm just gonna print the result I mean this variable which is the count so let's run it and um, we shouldn't see something that exciting um, we just get this result which is this the count of this area so what is it saying so it's saying well I have one pixel of value 61 I have three pixels of value 176 and 16 pixels of value 37 and I have this other values which are not uh, um, integers right but the reason that we're not getting an integer is because as you can see the the box is covering um, some sections right let me actually turn up for for the moment but it's covering this area that is gray right and it's cutting a pixel in half let's say so um, that way it will be uh, causing some pixels not to be counted completely as you can see it's, it's, it's a little bit bent those those pixels in that direction because of the projection but I can say that I have three of 176 16 of 37 and one from 61 so I'm guessing that 
the class 37 is, is this uh, lime green. Oh, so let me actually use the inspector. And um, what am I doing that I don't see the, yeah, that's right, it's 37, good. And um, the value that I was one, let's see, it says it's 61. So yeah, so if we go to the console, we see that 61 is the value one. And I'm guessing that the one that it's value 176 is the is this color. So let me go to the inspector. If I click there, it says 176. So, but it says that we have other two values, which is 121 and 122. So, but I'm guessing that they are being represented by gray. So that's why we cannot see those other pixels. But you know, I, I mean, if if you remember before when I clicked. I got like 121 in the area. So yeah, so that's mostly 121 and I'm guessing that there's other two pixels that are displayed as gray um, in the area. So that's why we cannot see uh, the, the other values of, um, of 122, for instance. But you get the idea. So, so we're counting pixels, but this is very useful because let's say you have a county, you want to measure what is the land cover within that, the land use within that county well then you can use this and um, if you want to analyze it through time or you want to compare different counties or you want to compare different watersheds you name it then this is a way to measure the amount that you have within that area if you wanted to determine the area then you just have to multiply this by this uh, the representation of area of each pixel that would be a way to do it okay so this is with categorical data sets um, and, um, and I thought about doing it with, uh, for the area of Boncom, because again, instead of being the geometry that we have here, we could also do it for, for Boncom. And in fact, let's go ahead and do that. Let me, let me save this for a moment. And um, what am I gonna call it? Let's call it categorical uh, data set uh, analysis. Okay. And um, in my scripts, let's, I think it was in video three that I, I did that. Um, yes, I have the code for Boncom and I have the table. So um, let me go again to categorical analysis. I'm gonna actually, um, yeah, what am I gonna do? So ah, I'm gonna go to video three, okay. And I'm gonna see I had the, this and um, the most important thing is the filter, right? So I had done this filter. Right, so in this filter, I, I was able to only select the county of, of Buncom, and then I did a clip, but I'm not gonna need to do the clip for the moment because I just going to measure for Buncom. And, um, and let's go back to my code that I was working right now, which was the categorical analysis. And um, I need to bring the assets, right, that I had worked before, so let's bring the, bon the boundary of the polygons. And um, let me bring here that line, right, where I'm selecting Boncom and I'm calling it county. So now I'm just gonna change the geometry for county, right? So that means that I'm gonna count all the pixels for each class uh, within the county. And the county that I'm selected is Boncom. So let's run that. And um, let's see that. So see, you have now all the values of counting for the Boncom County. You don't see Boncom County being presented here because I did not show it in the, I did not request that to be showed in the, in the map. Okay, so now we're going to do an example with continuous data. If you're still here with me. Okay, so let's um, go to a, a continuous data set. So let's close. Let's go ahead and close. Uh, what are we gonna do? Go to data set. We're gonna go to Landsat, which is a continuous data set. And let's go to Landsat 8. Hopefully you're not tired of my examples using Landsat data set. Um, let's go open that code. Good, good. Okay, that was quick. Let's go to Chapel Hill. And in 
Chapel Hill. We are here in Chapel Hill. Good. So let me use the inspector. I click here and I grab the longitude and the latitude and I'm going to put it here and I'm going to write 14 and as a zoom and then it zooms there. Good, good. And you can see the Landsat and you can see that this area is more urban and you can see that this area is since forest. Okay, so what are we going to do now? So we're going to do a, a zonal statistic analysis of a continuous data set and it is a continuous data set. I click here and it takes a while but it gives me the value for different bands and this values yes we can do some math with it and um, and we can do some interesting things with it in terms of mathematical uh, formulas and they're not categories because it, what they're showing is how much something is reflecting in the surface. Um, and, um, and if you remember from class, um, well, I mean, if you, remember, if you looked at out in your, from your window, um, you can see that, you know, trees reflect more green, right? And that's why their uh, leaves are green and also they reflect a lot of infrared. Um, and that's why it's also very good for keeping things cool. Um, and you also might have remember how to the important index of NDVI. And um, let's go ahead and, and, and make it into an NDVI, this, this data set of, of um, Landsat. So you can also see that. Um, so let's call it Landsat 8. And let's just reduce the uh, image collection to only the median. So I'm gonna go data set dot median, right? And now I have only that Landsat 8 and so for instance, I can just go here and eliminate this. Run, good. Okay, so, so let's start uh, doing the NDVI. So the way that NDVI is done in, in Google Earth Engine, one, one of the ways, I mean, is this way. So let's call an, a variable NDVI, call, call it whatever we want, but since we're going to do NDVI, let's call it NDVI, and um, I'm gonna do the following. So I have my image, which is Landsat 8, right? I have reduced the image collection by selecting the median, and it, it's named Landsat 8. And this Landsat 8, um, I'm going to do normalized difference. And if you remember class, um, the formula for NDVI was the near infrared minus the visible divided by the near infrared plus the visible, right? So this is what is happening. So we need to assign, sorry. We need to assign what are the bands of the near infrared for this normalized difference, which in our case for the Landsat 8, it was B5, sorry, it's uppercase, B5, and the red band, which is B4. And I mean, I can show you again that those are the bands, right? That's the B5 is the near infrared and red is the red band. And I mean, if you forgotten what a NDVI formula is, so I can go to NDVI Wikipedia. So you can see that the formula, they have it very nicely usually. Here, see, so near infrared minus the red. So it's a normalized difference. Um, so that's, we could also do it that, that same way by, by doing that formula. Um, but already this, this is a uh, nicer, a shorter way of writing it. Um, where are we? Where are we? Oh, here we are in the Landsat. Okay, so now we have the NDVI, and um, in fact, we can go ahead and um, when we uh, show it also as a map layer, um, I'm just gonna put NDVI, and but I should not put these params. Um, let's just call it, run it, and um, you can see this is the NDVI, right? Which is uh. It's in black and white, 
and um, and you can see that the higher values, if I turn off this, the higher values are in the forested areas and the lower values are in the more urban areas. So, okay, so let's say you wanted to do an analysis through time or uh, analysis through space where we're comparing the NDVI values. So again, that's why we are using some statistics. Let me go ahead and, and um, create two geometries. And before that, I should actually save this just in case I have some issues. Um, NDVI, Sono statistics. Okay, and um, I'm creating a geometry. I'll just create one geometry here in the in some urban area, and it's called geometry. And let's just make another one. Let me create a new layer and let's create another one here. Plus or minus the same value, uh, size. Um, and again, we need to do the same thing we did before uh, for calculating the the sum of statistics. And in this case, we're going to apply uh, a mean because we have continuous data set and we're going to apply it to the NDVI. We could have applied it actually to the Landsat with all its multiple bands, but just for the sake of making things easier, I'm going to apply it to the NDVI. Okay, so um, I'm just going to call var equals the mean, the mean for geometry one. So I'm just going to call it the mean one. And it's very similar to what we did before. So I'm going to use the Band, the, sorry, the image that I'm gonna that, that is going to be analyzed, and apply the reduce re, reduce region, and open parentheses, open curly parentheses, curly brackets, sorry, and um, indicate what is going to be the reducer, and the reducer is going to be um, which one we want to use. I'm going to show you again that there's several. The e reducer. So the e, e reducer that we have, okay, so we have multiple e reducers, right? So we can measure the mean, which is the one that we're gonna do, but we can also do other ones. So just just look around um, and depending on what you want to calculate. So I'm gonna do e, e reducer dot mean. Good. And let me give it some other attributes. Remember that I have to give it the geometry. And since we're calculating this one for the for the first uh, geometry, that geometry is called geometry. So geometry, geometry, and um, and the size uh, or the scale, I should say. And for this one, it's the same as we had for be for before, because it was uh, thirty. Um, but we could just verify that see the resolution is 30 meters so we just put 30 you can change the number and depending on what you want to do but for for our case I, I, I would just do 30 um, and um, let's do the same thing for just gonna copy paste it and I'm gonna call it mean 2 and instead of being geometry it's going to be in geometry 2 so again so I'm gonna calculate the the mean values of NDVI inside this box and the mean values of NDVI in that box. And uh, we need to print those things. So print um, you can just go ahead and put uh, the mean or mean one and then comma the mean one and again, we can do the copy paste. If I mean, I could type it too. <laughs> and um, put the mean two and mean two. Okay. Hopefully, I did things right. And uh, same text error. What did I do wrong? Hmm. Ah, here I have the error. Let's see. Do, do, do. Where did I miss? Ah, okay. Bar. Ah. I don't know how I did that. I guess what I'll see when I see the video. I'll hit run. Ah, I have the same error up here. Yeah. 
Okay, how did that happen? I don't know. All right. Okay. Yeah. So here I have what is expected a fairly low value in MDVIs in the object that is in the town and a higher MDVI in the area that is forested. So as you can see, you can apply these methods of reduced region um, to get zonal statistics for categorical data or continuous data as the one that we're seeing here.